Hello everybody. Uh, as requested, that's a, a tutorial on how to calculate or how to find the centroids and the moment of inertia of a compound uh, shape. Uh, I had one uh, before, but it was in Arabic and uh, I was requested to do one in English, so here I am. Okay, so let's take a look. Calculating centroids and moment of inertia. Here's the outline. This is what we were going to do. Okay, centroids and moment of inertia for common shapes. We're going to go over this. Then we'll try to locate the centroid of compound shapes. And I'll show you a quick way of uh, calculating the ix and iy about the x and y axis. Actually, I'm going to just show the uh, ix part and the iy is basically the same thing, but uh, you have to keep in mind the uh, couple of couple of points in order to get the correct answer. Centroids and moment of inertia of common shapes. Uh, this table you can get in the back of any mechanics of material book. Uh, I found this online. Uh, if you Google centroids and moment of inertia of common shapes, you'll find this table available. But probably we're going to use in future examples a couple of the formulas shown in here if we have a shape that has a circle or semicircle okay so let's move on centroids obtaining the compound shape from smaller known shapes so if you have a compound shape a very weird looking shape that's not a circle not a rectangle not a triangle we can get uh, the compound shape by knowing how we how to construct it from known shapes then we're going to go ahead and locate the local centroid of each smaller shape then we're going to locate the distances x bar and y bar for each smaller shape uh, then we're going to construct a table a very nice looking table to apply the following formula x bar which is the global centroid or the, the the global distance to the centroid and y bar is the other global distance in the y direction okay locating centroids of compound shapes so what is a compound shape a compound shape it is a shape that is made from other known shapes here are some examples so this is a simple example right here and there is another one and another just a little bit complicated example so let's take a look at how can we get these shapes from other known shapes. The first one, or the first technique is adding. Adding, meaning that we can get this. If you think of it, it's two shapes. It's shape one and shape two. So if we add one and two, just like I'm showing right here, we can get this thing. Okay. The second technique is by subtracting. So if we have this shape which is 1 and this shape which is 2 and it's located exactly inside right here something like this if we subtract it subtract this from this we're gonna get the original shape so that's the second method it's subtracting the third me method can involve both subtracting and adding so this shape is basically 1 right here as shown 2 which is this shape which is right here that's by adding these two and then I'm gonna subtract this circle so it's very very important to know how to get this shape because the way we are getting these shapes will be very influential in making the table to calculate the uh, centroids and the moment of inertia. Let's look at an example. Locate the centroid of the shape shown in the figure. All dimensions are in millimeters. Okay, so we have the shape and you can tell by now it's basically this and I'm gonna take away the shape, subtract this one and here is how it's shown 
So we have this shape, the compound shape, basically it's this shape minus that shape. The distances you are, you are seeing right here shown are the distance from the centroids of the rectangle. For example, the 50 is from the centroid of the rectangle to the y-axis and the 80 is here from the center, centroid of the rectangle to the x-axis. Uh, doing the same thing for the uh, smaller shape, the one we subtracted from this one. The distance here is 38, so this 38 below is that dimension and 86 is this dimension. So what can we do with these shapes? This is the table we're going to construct. First, we need to have how many parts are we talking about here? We're talking about two parts. This is shape 1 and shape 2. You can name it part or shape. First, we need to calculate the area of each shape. And it's very easy to do, to do so. It's just basically the area of this thing. D just don't confuse these numbers with the areas. You take the total area, which is the length from here to here, which is that length, multiplied by this length. That will give me the area of the or sh the area of shape one. The area of shape two is this distance or this dimension multiplied by that dimension. Then we're gonna find the x bar, which is the cent the distance from the centroid of the small shape to the x-axis. Remember, x-bar is the distance from the centroid of the, sm the shape or the small shape to the x-axis, uh, or excuse me, to the y-axis, which is, in our case here is 50, and the distance y-bar is 80, which is parallel to the y-axis. So, x-bar is parallel to the x-axis and y-bar is parallel to the y-axis. Then we're going to multiply this distance right here by the area to get x bar a. Then we're going to multiply this distance y bar by the area to get this. Okay, so let's take a look. Here are the answers for the first one. It's 160. The area of the first one, which is this one, is 160 by 100, so it's 16,000. And the distance, remember, the x bar is parallel to the x axis and it's measured from the centroid of the shape to the y axis, which is 50. y bar is 80. We multiply x bar by y, uh, x bar by a, we get this number, and y bar by a to get this number. Let's take a look at the tricky part now which is for shape number two. Shape number two, okay, the area is, again, is 40 by 100. But you notice here there is a minus sign right here, and this minus sign. The reason I'm using this minus sign because I'm subtracting this area from the area of shape one. So I'm subtracting the area of two from 1 to get the compound shape. That's why I need a negative sign here. Okay, what are the x bar again? x bar is 38 and y bar is 86. Then I carry over the multiplication will give me x bar times a. It's negative again because I'm multiplying by a negative area. It's negative 1520000 and here we gotta get negative 344000. The next step is to get the summation of the areas. Remember, 16,000 minus 4,000 will give me 12,000. And I'm going to get the summation of this column and the summation of this column. Okay, next we apply the formula. The global x bar it's equal to the summation of x bar a, and that's why we did the summation right here. Over the summation of the area, which is this one. So six eight six four eight zero 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 
over 12000 will give me 54 millimeters and for the Y bar I'm gonna do the summation of Y bar times A which is this over the summation of the areas of which is this will give me this so these are the coordinates of the centroids of the compound shape. Now we know the location of the centroid. Let's divide the complicated or compound shape into smaller shapes with known Ix and Iy. That This way we can get started on calculating the moment of inertia. Okay, so we have a, com we have a complicated shape and we need to divide it into parts just the same way we did the compound shape but I need to know the Ix and Iy of these smaller shapes so for example if if I'm having something like this so I need the Ix for this shape and the Iy plus I need the Ix and the Iy for this shape then we will apply the parallel axis theorem PAT for the small parts and we're going to use the same logic in obtaining the compound shape from the small sh small shapes to apply the summation basically what I'm trying to say here is be aware of the negative signs okay let's take a look how can we do that first the parallel axis theorem so then the shifted or the new ix is going to be the original ix for the small shape plus the area of the small shape and d as it's explained here is the perpendicular distance from the centroid of the small part to the okay it's either the x or y axis depending on which one are you calculating are you calculating x or y so if you are calculating x it's something if you're calculating y it's something else and same thing applies to the IY prime so let's let's take a look at this the example again so IX prime right here remember it's IX plus a D squared so what is the IX of the first shape so that's the first shape IX is b h cube over 12 so this is b and the whole thing is h so it's b h cube over 12 multiplied by or uh, over 12 plus the area the whole area of the shape multiplied by d square so if i'm calculating ix it's basically the perpendicular distance to the x axis if I'm calculating the moment of inertia about the x-axis it's the perpendicular distance from the centroid of the shape to the x-axis so let's take a look at the numerical values here the area is 100 by 160 or B H so B is 100 H is 160 cubed over 12 plus the area again is 100 by 160 multiply by 80 squared so it's this distance this is our D if I'm calculating the X and I get a value of 44.37 times 10 to the 6 millimeter to the power of 4 let's do now this part again B is this which is 40 right here H is this which is 100 right here then over 12 plus 40 by 100 is the area okay now what is D I'm calculating about the x-axis so it's the perpendicular distance from the centroid of the shape to the x-axis which is 86 so what to do with these two values ask yourself this question how did I get this compound shape 
It's this shape minus this shape. So basically what I'm going to do, I'm going to say ix of 1 minus, because it's the same way, it's, you just use the same logic, you got the compound shape, minus i x 2. So if I do this correctly, I'll get a value of 11.45 times 10 to the 6 millimeter to the 4th. If I'm doing the y, the i y, it's basically the same logic. Again, the only difference here is this distance 80 and this distance 86 is going to be substituted by new values, which, which are for i x 1, Remember, if I'm taking the moment of inertia about the x-axis, I use the 80. So if I'm, use, if I'm taking about the y-axis, it's 50. So I'm going to use, f take this out and say it's 50. And I'm going to, I used 86 before. Now I'm going to use the 38. So I'm going to take this 38. And I left this part just for you to do the calculation. And that concludes our tutorial. And I hope you got to know something. Okay, thank you.